All right, well, finally, today's the day. Uh, we got notification last week that our van's handover date has been brought forward to today. So we're going to head up to the dealer, uh, it's about an hour away, and do the handover. So hopefully we'll be able to show you some of what goes on during the handover, and then we'll do a bit of a walk around of the van once we get it back. But 18 months wait, and we're here, finally. So we got everything home, um, just cable tied the was a connection onto the um, A-frame of the caravan just to get us home. Uh, and now I've just finished securing it properly, I'll show you what I've done. And so the auto electrician that installed the rest of this system on my car uh, gave me this mount uh, for the Wazza connection on the van so when I got home all I needed to do was drill a couple of holes self tapping the screws to lock it in place put it on um, but when we got the van there was an excessive amount of cable remaining so what I've done is connected it all the way through followed it underneath the hitch just give us a sec So I've run the, the camera cable along the breakaway cable here, stretched it underneath so it's all out of the way and in through the hole in the chassis where it comes from the back of the van. So there's a huge amount of cable left so I'll show you what what I did with the rest of it. Okay, so now we're under the van, uh, having a look. This is the the Safety Dave camera cable that comes from the A-frame of the van. It comes up, transfers into the upper channel up here, the upper channel. Um, so what I did, I just pulled the excessive cable through, curled it up, cable tied it in place here, added a little bit of more of this core fluid. Um, cover just to protect it so it doesn't rub on the edge of the chassis rail as we're going along so now that's tidied it right up and hopefully we won't have any issues moving forward so one of the things that we've changed on our van uh, is the grey water pipe or the outlet for it anyway so um, from factory all it has is a valve and then a piece of PVC sticking out the end that you're supposed to slide your grey water pipe onto. Um, I don't necessarily like that one. So I've changed it to the cam lock system, 25 millimeter. Um, for me to do that, what I've done is I cut the pipe back here. So underneath the mount for it. And then um, used a rubber connector to connect the pipe um, to this portion. The reason for that is that um, they use um, different grades of PVC to get these together, so the actual valve and this cam lock, it's pressure pipe, where this is non-pressure pipe on the back of the van, 
and they're different sizes slightly. So I used the rubber hose here, a 50 millimeter saddle strap that I've bent to fit and then two hose clamps. That's it. So it works really well. So the, the grey water hose, all it does is clip on with a cam lock. Um, I find it better secure. So that was one of the first things that we did um, on the modifications for the van. On our van from factory, uh, we opted to have the inverter fitted um, at factory so that all the wiring is set up for it. So our selector here is slightly different to non-inverter vans. As you can see, it has dual supply. So what this does is allow us to switch from mains power selection, which is the left-hand side one, or the alternate supply. The alternate supply here is for the inverter. So all of our power points in the whole van, when the inverter is active, are powered by it. So um, this is a very neat, clean setup. Um, a little different to what, a, what they look like if you have it uh, fitted for but not with, uh, which I now believe on any new orders they're not really liking doing that because people put um, cheaper uh, inverters in and are having trouble with the wiring. But when you, when you select it from factory it costs a little bit more but the setup and the operability of it is very easy. One of the other very big differences to our van uh, is that we opted for airbag suspension to be fitted. Um, a number of reasons for that. Um, we find airbag suspension runs really, really well on off-road conditions, but as well, I have an injured back. So um, it's very hard for me to sit and try and chock a van to get the weight level in and out, in and out, trying to get that done. So we opted for the easeability of being able to level a van using the airbags. When you have the airbags fitted, they come with a control box, which is this box here. It's under the edge of the van, uh, just in front of the back, t in front of the tire. So if you open it up, it has all your control panels in here. So you can turn your compressor and the whole system on. Um, I'll turn it on briefly, but it is very noisy. Now it's, it's actually uh, pressurizing the system. There is an air tank underneath the chassis as well, uh, which allows it to hold air. Um, you have auto and remote. So automatic, it one's each side. Automatic is once you've leveled it out and say you're on an angle and it's completely different. So you've got one high side, one side low, then you can go to auto and the van will level itself out by itself. With the remote, it's once you actually use the, the push button remote, which I'll grab out and show you in a little bit, um, and you can change the pressure yourself on each side. So for us sitting here in the driveway, there's not much of a difference between the two sides of the van, but that's, this is how we level it out. When you're stationary, you always have it in remote, uh, so the van doesn't try and alter everything, and you also drive in remote don't want the van trying to correct itself all the time once you're actually driving. You also have air out here and hoses and everything so you can pump up your tyres uh, from the van from this air, this unit as well. It's pretty cool. Um, it gives us a lot of operability with the van. We can, if we need to lower the van um, going into a tight space so we're worried about the air conditioning going under trees or something like that, we can actually lower the van right down and we can take out, uh, from where it's sitting, I can bring the guard down probably about that far off. So we're, we're dropping it a good 25 centimeters. Um, we can drop the height of the van. So it comes in handy for that as well. Okay, some of the other things that we've done for our van um, two jerry can holders, the June jerry can holders, they hold uh, 20 litres each. So they're going to be for diesel, uh, but only when we go out back. Uh, we'll take those. Um, as you can see, the stone guard's gone. 
um, I've removed that we're getting a stone stomper so the actual uh, original one is not needed for this van the other reason if you have the jerry cans mounted here uh, where I've got them uh, then your actual stone guard which you can see the old marks on the chassis um, just here the marks there from where it was actually strapped it doesn't fit with the jerry can holders uh, sitting here so we've removed it completely uh, it's become a donor for other parts of the van which I'll show you in a minute um, for us we've gotten rid of the original Alco jockey wheel and we've gone for the trailer mate uh, jack uh, jockey wheel that's interchangeable so it has the flat plate uh, but also you can change it to a jockey wheel as well um, this also gives us the ability to remove the original jack out of the van uh, saving us some space at the back of the van um, we've altered things a little bit for our preferences again um, we had the lights changed um, I think they're from a musketeer instead of the uh, sequential lights that they've been putting on the vans um, and they've also been put um, the opposite way the reason for that is in the future I actually want to put two spare tires so uh, on the back of the van and if we have the standard tail lights uh, it won't be legal because the, the tires will actually cover up those uh, indicators and brake lights so um, that's one of the things we've changed out here uh, on the back you can see the safety Dave camera sitting just below the, the light up there um, it works pretty well it helps to see what's coming up behind you but that's all the, all the differences on the back at the moment one of the bigger changes that we've done um, is installed uh, this board so the standard um, barbecue tray is a lot smaller than I needed it's actually under here and I've turned it upside down so that its flat side is up and the reason for that is that uh, it's designed for a Weber Q with the new gas compliance rules um, having a Weber Q you can't actually use the gas bayonet the barbecues have to have the flame out arrested to be uh, legal um, and gas compliant so we've gone for the Ziggy um, this is the Ziggy Nomad so it's actually got the flame out um, system on it so it's fully gas compliant to make it fit it's a very wide little barbecue so I put the board on the bottom of it and then have secured the barbecue to the board just by these uh, little hooks ratchet straps so the barbecue fits nicely it's it's very close um, on either side when you do it so it's really close but it does actually fit perfectly inside um, so I find it really really good uh, for what we need um, and it also maintains the gas compliance of the van So for our van, uh, we opted for uh, deleting the microwave, putting in a 188 litre fridge instead. So as you can see, it takes up all the space um, and it means that we lost the cupboard at the top uh, where they normally put all the electrical stuff. So for us, all of our electrical stuff is actually here on the wall. Um, I've asked them when we ordered the van to increase the height of all these switches by between two and three hundred millimeters from standard um, I'm five foot ten and a half so when I lie on this bed my feet touch this wall so I didn't want those switches down where I'm going to sit there and smack my feet on them all the time we have uh, gas hot water electric hot water air conditioning uh, the TV um, the double GPO uh, all with inverter so when we're on inverter all these power points including this GPO uh, work from the inverter uh, 12 volt 
and then the light uh, control box which we've gone through and actually marked it up so that we know which one's which um, on the other side there's another 12, uh, cigarette lighter 12 volt socket uh, GPO and then our inverter switch so that's how we turn our inverter on or off um, just there it's a red arc 3000 watt inverter uh, which is underneath the second bed down here which I'll show you at some point in time um, underneath at the head of the bed we decided to try um, the toiletry bags just as an organizer to be able to put things like your phone glasses remotes when you're in bed um, and easy access as we don't have the microwave uh, and we lost the cupboard up here um, it's a blank space at the moment so all we do is velcro our remotes there when we're not using them the other thing we did on this van um, the current gladiators that are coming out and i believe it's all of them the force all that the stereo the radio and speakers is no longer on this side they're actually putting it over this side so they reduce the size of this door and put a plate in and the speakers and head unit are stuck here now we didn't want that so we wanted the, the actual space uh, in this cupboard without it being protruded through here so we had the stereo completely removed so there's no speakers no head deck nothing in this van uh, even the outside ones have been removed so um, that's our preference we just use a little Bluetooth speaker instead um, we wanted the space being such a little van and what we want to do with it uh, that's what we wanted so um, moving in the kitchen um, actually one of the big things that we changed on our van is the antenna so everyone's antenna actually sits here on the on the van we didn't want that the reason why is I'm going to put another solar panel on the outside up here in the future so I didn't want the vet the antenna in the way for the TV so we asked them to put it back in the original spots where some of the first um, gladiators had it so it sits here um, just above the kitchen we don't use it very often because we generally stream um, TV so the likelihood of us using it is minimal the door misses it just but it does actually pass under it so uh, for us that was the better use of space on the roof um, and yeah that's where our antenna is uh, one of the other changes from when we ordered our van um, it took us 18 months to get the van so there was a number of, number of addition changes and things that uh, Crusader did uh, during the time one was that the actual control unit the BM Pro control unit is here above the door not in the cupboard over here we asked if we could put it back there um, mainly because it's over the stairs basically so you, you just got to be careful um, we're not the best sighted people um, we've got glasses and that if you don't have them we gotta lean over it was just something we asked for but no it, it had to go here so we've got the Odyssey screen so it's the upgraded one um, 400 amp hours of lithium uh, 3000 watt inverter uh, we have the BM Pro shunt uh, um, com links Bluetooth everything on this particular one so it's been pretty good so far um, I'll do something on the power system on its own uh, in another video um, but that's the setup we've used a lot of fusion hooks at the moment so we're trialing a lot of different ways to secure things so it's just a Bunnings fusion lock this is all it is um, this is a, a, a soap holder that we we got hold of we don't need this particular one but they're all the fusion lock brand so we've got two there and that's for our jackets so when it's colder we'll come in and we'll put our jackets there they stay there another van pocket um, we try to put pockets everywhere because there's not a huge amount of storage on these it, it's you got to be creative where you put things and then as we move down on the very very bottom we've got a shoe holder so it's just been there this is a new one 
we're gonna see if it works. We only have a couple of pairs of shoes with us. So we'll see how it works. Um, so the kitchen, as you see, standard kitchen bench. We haven't altered anything here. Um, a fusion lock soap dispenser. So it's actually sitting on the bench, but it doesn't seem to move at the moment. Um, this is empty when we travel, but when we're not, dishwashing detergent goes up here. Uh, um, salt, pepper, anything that's quick ready access is here as well. Um, you'll see up in the corner, we have the Y tie movement sensor. So we have the full Y tie system on this van uh, for security. So if we have to drop the van, it's as secured as best as it possibly can be. Um, if they really want it, they'll take it, but that's there. I'll do another section on the Y tie later as well. One of the things that we did notice is that the light in the kitchen area here, uh, it's okay, but it's not really bright. So what we've done is up underneath the bent, up underneath the cupboard here, we put this light, just a light bar from Bunnings, um, and it allows us just to add that little bit more light. You can change it from uh, yellow white to a blue white, so a cold light depending on what your preferences are. And then we just charge it straight from the power point in the corner there. Because that comes in handy just to give us a little bit more light. Um, does. We've got the collapsible handy bin. That stays there all the time. Just pulls out when we actually stop so that we can use it. Um, it's pretty cool. It does get in the way a little bit. So uh, we try not to get it really full uh, and if the bags are getting full, then we transfer it into a bag that's on the spare tire at the back. Um, I guess you see, we've got a lot of um, hooks that we've put everywhere. So we just stuck a T-tail hook here. And then over the top next to the screen, we've got key hooks. So that's where we put all of our keys uh, when we come in the van. In the toilet. Um, we've done a few things in here, so in the cupboard, so everyone's got the cupboard. We've used a paper towel holder just to sit the toilet paper on. So we found after traveling that you open the door I and mean, the toilet paper jumps out at you. And if you've got a wet floor still from your shower, then you're going to have wet toilet paper. So um, that's in here. We keep our toilet chemicals um, in here as well. And then um, our shower uh, body wash, toothpaste, and that currently sitting in this container here. So again, it doesn't fall out everywhere. These are our towels. Um, there, there's three towels here. Doesn't look like it, but they're actually Will and Wind recycled uh, towels. Now go check them out um, if you're interested. They're made from recycled plastic bottles, um, but they're amazing. They wick water really, really well. Um, they dry you after the shower, but yet they're so small and really light. So that's three full-size towels uh, in there. Um, they've been one of the best values. We, we got them at um, the show when they had a show special on um, and highly recommended. Um, so underneath, we have a, a towel hook. So when you're having a shower, you pull the curtain across and it stops your towel getting wet, but it's right there and it's easy to to reach once you finish the shower and then we put our toilet holder here it doesn't get wet so that works really well um, squeegee so give it a bit of a squeegee when you're finished and also we put a bit of a toilet cleaner at the bottom just if you need to use it so it's stuck there so it works pretty well um, we've also put up our toothbrushes hang on little little clips like cable clips up the top there, so they're right out of the way. Well, that's a bit of a rundown on what we've done to our van, um, both uh, before we bought it, when we actually ordered it, um, and where we're at now. Um, we've had the van for a couple of months, so there, there has been a few little bits and pieces that we found that will need to be fixed in warranty. Um, I'll run through that, uh, and also the modifications, um, further upgrades that we've done to the van, 
uh, post purchase and also some of the things that we were trialing that didn't work and the things that did work uh, so that'll be in the next episode um, also um, go through the stone stomper that we fitted uh, and a couple other bits and pieces like that but uh, hopefully you found this uh, episode interesting um, and informative as I said this is our van um, is built for what we need some of the things are not what everyone would have fitted um, but let us know your thoughts comments um, in the comments below we'll try and get back to you um, yeah thanks for watching